So what is OpenTelemetry? OpenTelemetry is a collection of APIs, SDKs, and tools, and we use it to instrument, generate, collect, and export telemetry data. Think of logs, metrics, and traces. In the past, we had different tools for different applications, different types of servers and operating systems, various different tools to create and generate logs, tools for collecting those logs. Think of things like FluentBit, FluentD. And then for metrics, we have Prometheus and then for traces we have Jaeger. OpenTelemetry looks to consolidate all of this under one framework. So what is OpenTelemetry? Well it is a framework and toolkit that is designed to generate, collect, receive, process as well as export telemetry data and this telemetry data can be anything from traces, metrics and logs. The cool thing about OpenTelemetry is that it's an open standard, an open framework that allows vendors to use the framework and this means that you own the data you generate and there's no vendor lock-in. In the recent months I've started taking a look at a lot of different monitoring and observability tools, some that are managed and self-hosted and one huge benefit of OpenTelemetry I've found so far is that you can run your own collectors whether you're using Kubernetes or virtual machines. You run your own collector and you decide how to get the telemetry data, either you use a pool or a push model. You can then process and transform those metrics. Think about things like Kubernetes clusters. You want pod names, deployment names added to your telemetry data. If you're running in the cloud like EC2 instances, you might want EC2 instance names or specific cloud properties. You can transform that data. You can also process the data. Think about dropping noise like logs and traces that contains health probes. This allows you to process and filter the data and then you can forward and pass it on. And this is the thing I found super powerful. This means I can forward my data to any kind of provider, whether it's a managed or another self-hosted open source product. Think of any vendor that supports open telemetry. This means I can quickly switch between monitoring platforms to try them out. A little while ago, I discussed how open telemetry works with the focus on logs. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at tracing. So if you're new to open telemetry, I highly recommend you check out how open telemetry works works with logging. A lot of the concepts and standards are the same when it comes to tracing and metrics. So in this video, we'll take a look at what the collector looks like, how to generate traces and how to collect them, how to process them and forward them onto a backend. So without further ado, let's go. Now I like to basically view open telemetry as three as three main steps. The first step is to collect, then process, and finally export. Whether you're running open telemetry on VMs, containers, or Kubernetes, these are the three main steps you need to be thinking of. How do we collect, how do we process, and how do we export? But to do all of this, we need an open telemetry collector. Now the easiest way to get an open telemetry collector up and running is to use something like docker or a container. In this example I have a docker compose file. I create a small network called tracing so I can run all of these example apps on the same network. Then I create a service called Otel Collector. I give the container a name called Otel Collector and I run the OpenTelemetry Collector Docker image. And this is enough to get a simple OpenTelemetry Collector up and running. The main thing is I'm giving it a volume here called dot data. And this volume is purely for testing purposes because what I want to do is I want to test my collection, the pulling of logs or the scraping of metrics or the receiving of traces. I may want to process it and I want to test whether the data has been received so I can use a local file exporter to do debugging. I always recommend this when you're troubleshooting collection. We'll take a look at this in a second. Next up I have a config YAML. The OpenTelemetry collector is powered by a configuration file and it's expected in this location for this container image and all the magic happens in this config file. When working with OpenTelemetry it's important to understand the configuration file because that is where 
where all the magic happens. And then you'll start understanding those three important steps. The first step being the collection step, how to fetch things. And those things can be logs, metrics, or traces. And remember, open telemetry can either go and pull or data can be pushed to the collector. So it's very flexible. In order to do this, we need to set up a configuration file and we need to create what's called a receiver. Now the open telemetry configuration, especially when it comes from the documentation point of view, can be really overwhelming because open telemetry uses a lot of terminology. You have to get to grips with the terms. They use terminologies like receivers, extensions, services, pipelines, exporters, signals, baggage, and all of these kind of terms. And what do they mean? So step one for us is to collect telemetry, in our case, traces. And we do this with the receiver. So the receiver, allows us to fetch things. If you go to the configuration, you'll find the config structure is explained over here. We have receivers, processors, exporters, connectors, and there are a lot more terms. Go ahead and click on receivers. Receivers allows to collect telemetry data from one or more sources and they can be pull or pushed base. So we can use receivers to get data from Prometheus, to get logs from pretty much anywhere, or to collect traces. We can have another collector, like another open telemetry collector, push traces to us or we can have applications pushing traces to us. With tracing, when you're running in something like a Kubernetes cluster, you generally set up a collector and you use the OpenTelemetry auto instrumentation resource that you can deploy in various namespaces and they can target applications and those applications or pods will automatically be configured to start sending traces to our collector. This is the best way to collect traces within a Kubernetes cluster. Let me know down in the comments below if you want to see open telemetry on Kubernetes. When you're running in Docker Compose or in virtual machines, you want to set up a collector and you want to go and configure your services to send metrics to you. So it works a little bit different than logging. So to receive traces, we want to set up a receiver and under the receiver, we want to set up a receiver called OTLP. This is the open telemetry protocol for tracing. And generally traces are received over either gRPC. gRPC is a lot better for performance. Most tracing clients and microservices will use gRPC. It's the general default one for open telemetry. For clients that don't support gRPC, they can also use HTTP. So generally for an open telemetry collector that receives traces, we want this entire receiver over here. We wanna set up a receiver that can receive both gRPC and HTTP. And notice the port numbers. 4317 is generally used for gRPC port and 4318 is generally used for the HTTP port. And we'll have these two ports open on our collector. So this is where we jump into that config.yaml that we're mounting in the Docker Compose file. We create a receiver block like this. The receiver block tells OpenTelemetry how to receive stuff. In this case, we're receiving OTLP, we're using the OTLP plugin, and we're exposing these two endpoints, one for gRPC, one for HTTP. Remember in our previous video on logging, we talked about these different types of receivers that are available. These are basically plugins that OpenTelemetry supports. If we take a look at the receiver from the previous video, where we covered logging, we had a file log receiver that was able to pull logs from Docker containers running on on the same virtual machine. So you should get the idea that receivers are just plugins for OpenTelemetry that are configured to be able to pull data or receive data. Now that we have a receiver configured, we can receive traces, but what do we do with the telemetry or the traces in this case? Generally, open telemetry collectors will want to send that to a storage backend. But before doing so, we may need to process the telemetry. This is where another configuration option comes in, which is called processes. Processes take the data that's collected by receivers and then modify or transform it before sending it to exporters. This can be useful for a number of reasons. You may want to enrich your telemetry with Kubernetes metadata like pod names, 
container names, you may want to filter out noise. You may have a lot of applications where you don't want to collect the logs, or you may have health probes in your traces that you don't want to store. In my open telemetry configuration, I have a processes section. And as a best practice, I have the memory limiter processor, which allows us to limit the percentage of memory used by the collector. This is useful if you're running in a container with memory limits, or you're running in an environment like Kubernetes with pod limits or requests. This allows your collector to run within a certain percentage of that memory allocated and prevents your collector from running out of memory. And then I have a batching processor. Basically, this just tells the collector to use batching for sending the data to exporters. The larger the batches, the bigger the payloads are going to be going across the network. So some basic batching configuration. And then the last processor I have here is just a trace rejection filter. And this is just to remove any health spans, like any endpoints or traces where you have like health probes. This allows me to drop health probes from my traces and you can also use this to optimize cost so that you reduce the noise and you only send the traces to your storage backend that you care about so now we have a receiver defining how we want to get our traces we have a processor about what we're going to do with the traces but these two configuration sections is not going to do anything with the collector this is where the third construct comes in which is called a service. A service is a key configuration for open telemetry. The service section is used to configure what components are enabled in the collector based on other configuration found in the receivers, processors, exporters, and extensions section. So the service allows us to basically bring it all together. As I showcase here, the service is what enables the receivers. It basically stitches it all together using a few other subcomponents. So we have an extension. In our case, we don't have any extensions for our tracing. Extensions is something we used in logging. So I won't be covering that here, but the pipeline is the key section because with pipelines, we can enable tracing logging and metrics. So pipelines is basically just a group of resources. So pipeline subsection is where the pipelines are configured. In our case, we're building a tracing pipeline. So we can have traces, we can have metrics, and we can have logs. In the previous video, we covered logs. We built a log pipeline. Now we're going to build a trace pipeline. Trace pipeline will consist of receivers, processors, and exporters. The service section will hold the pipeline and any kind of extensions we want to add on top. So coming back to the conceptual configuration under pipeline traces we're going to bring it all together we're going to define our receiver and that points to our otlp receiver we have at the top here we're going to define our processor section and that's going to point to our three processors we have here memory limiter batch and filter and we're going to define our exporters here now exporters is the third main key step with open telemetry what to do with the telemetry. We've received it, we've processed it. Now, what do we do with it? Exporters allows us to send this telemetry to a backend. We can send logs to things like Elasticsearch. We can send it to third-party monitoring platforms. We can send it up to cloud providers. For traces, we can actually go ahead and store it in something like a Grafana Tempo database. We can also use exporters for debugging purposes. We can write these traces to a file. We can write it to the terminal. This allows allows us to debug and test things. You can have multiple exporters, so you can actually fan out to multiple monitoring systems. This allows you to test out another third-party monitoring solution if you wanted to. And this is the key power of open telemetry collectors. So going back to my open telemetry configuration file, we've defined our receivers and our processors. Now we have exporters. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have two exporters defined here, actually three. The debug one, I'm just going to leave empty like this but the debug one will basically print things to the terminal within the collector standard out so we can go ahead and debug it this helps us check whether traces are being received we can also use the file exporter which just dumps things to that volume i created so we can check the contents of the traces and we can identify if we are receiving traces from certain clients this helps us troubleshoot when we have three clients and one of them don't work we can see what data we are receiving also very good for troubleshooting and then the third one here i'm going to have is an otl 
FP exporter. And just so you know, you can actually structure these exporters based on their name. You can have the type of exporter, like this is file, this is OTLP, and this is debug. You can actually give them a name by putting a forward slash with some name. This means you can have multiple file exporters with different names. Because one powerful feature of OpenTelemetry Collection is that you can have multiple OTLP exporters. You can send things to Tempo, you can send it to third party systems, and they all might use OTLP as the exporter. So this allows you to put different OTLP exporters. You can go OTLP other, and then send it somewhere else to another OTL collector. This is very useful because you can try out other monitoring systems. You can also have a collector per namespace in a cluster if you wanted to break it apart and have these all fan out to other collectors. So you can have an open telemetry collector like this one send data to another open telemetry collector. That's all up to you. It's a very modular design. So in this example here, I'm just going to forward it to a tempo database that I'm running in Docker Compose. So that's how you define a bunch of exporters. And then we bring it all together with a service pipeline. We're going to enable a trace pipeline and we say here that we want receivers, processors and exporters. You have to have these three sections and this is where you stitch things up. So my receiver is going to be the OTLP one, the one I defined up here. That's the one over there. The processor is going to be my three processors, my memory limiter, my batch and my cascading filter like so. So I have my three processors defined there and my exporters which are the exporters we have looked at over here. And that is pretty much it for the OpenTelemetry configuration file. And this is the same thing if you're running in something like Kubernetes. Learning this is essential. When we take a look at OpenTelemetry operator in Kubernetes, you're going to be writing these types of configuration if you're building your own collectors. Now to bring this all together, I have my OpenTelemetry collector ready to go. I've also developed a bunch of microservices. Some are just web-based front-end UIs, some are back-end.net, and some are back in Go APIs. And what I've done, I've used the OpenTelemetry automatic instrumentation libraries. You can find these on the OpenTelemetry website. It's a way for developers to do zero code instrumentations. In my Docker Compose file, I have an example for Go and C Sharp. Zero code instrumentation is available for multiple programming languages. If you're using the OpenTelemetry operator on top of Kubernetes, you can actually automate this and have this instrumentation injected automatically into pods. Let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to see that on Kubernetes. So to show you that in action, I have a bunch of microservices, a video's web front end, a playlist API back end, a playlist API OTEL. This container is needed because I'm basically showcasing a sidecar. This is something that OpenTelemetry operator does for us when we deploy to Kubernetes, and this only applies to Go. Here I have another video's API. This is a C Sharp application. Since the playlist API is written in Go, we need the sidecar container, and this is how we would export the zero code auto instrumentation to our OpenTelemetry collector. If you're using the OpenTelemetry operator on Kubernetes, this is fully automated. For .NET, this is a little bit easier. I have a videos API over here, and all I need to do here is define a couple of environment variables. But here you can see I'm pointing to my OpenTelemetry collector. And then I have a couple of databases, a videos database and a playlist database, and these are all Redis databases. So all these microservices will send traces off to our OpenTelemetry collector. And then just to showcase that I have a Grafana instance here and the Grafana instance will use this tempo as a data source. And this is where we will be sending all our telemetry to. I can head over to the terminal and I can do docker compose up to bring everything up and running. If the container is up and running, I can head over to localhost in the browser, refresh that a couple of times. And this is our video's web interface calling a playlist API, which calls video API behind the scenes. So basically demonstrating a fan out with different programming languages and Redis database backends. It's a nice way to illustrate open telemetry tracing. And if I go to localhost 3000, open the Grafana instance, username and password is just admin admin. I can head over to the tempo data source and I can hit the explore button. And then if I give it enough time, I can see my traces are starting to come through. And I can go ahead and select one of the traces from my playlist API and then I can start exploring. If you want to review the source code for this, you can find it on the GitHub repo in the link down below. In the GitHub repo, you'll find a monitoring folder. In the monitoring folder, you'll find a folder on logging, which covers OpenTelemetry for logging. You'll also find a folder for tracing 
which also has a readme file and a docker compose file that we ran today. In this tracing open telemetry folder you'll find all the applications that we've taken a look at today, the config for open telemetry collector as well as the docker compose file to get everything up and running locally with ease so you can easily go ahead and get this up and running with ease. So hopefully that helps you understand how tracing works in open telemetry and if you want to see more in the realm of tracing and monitoring let me know in the comments down below and if you like the video be sure to like subscribe hit the bell so you know when i upload next and if you want to support the channel even further be sure to hit the join button down below to become a youtube member and as always thanks for watching and until next time peace